Hello everyone! Today we're going to show you how to play Sabika, the new game by Herman Mian. A Euro game recommended for players aged 14 and above, from 1 to 4 players, and with a duration of approximately 60 to 120 minutes. The aim of the game is to appear in the historical texts as one of the most influential Nasrid nobles of the time. Preparation First, place the main board on the table according to the number of players. In three player games, cover the indicated secondary action spaces with the three cancellation tiles. Place the Sultan's workers on their corresponding squares. Neither the Sultan's workers nor the cancellation tiles are required in four player games. Put all of the raw materials and goods in the raw materials goods bag. Then place a randomly chosen token on every square showing this icon, ensuring the raw material side is face up. Place the dinars and materials at the side of the main board to create a reserve within reach of all players. Next, place one marble on each square with this icon. Then, place the narrator token on the first space of the round track. Then, take one of each letter of the Sultan's Wishes tiles and place them randomly on the three corresponding spaces. Return the rest to the box. Place the major construction tiles face up, filling in the hexagonal spaces to the left and right of the rondo. Nine purple tiles on the left hand side and twelve blue tiles on the right hand side. Create two stacks of 12 storehouse tiles face down and place them in their corresponding spaces. Then draw two tiles from each pile face up. Place the minor construction cards in their space to the left of the rondel and draw the first four. Put the minor poem cards in the indicated space and draw the cards corresponding to the number of players. Draw two major poem cards for each player in the game, keeping in mind that they must all be of different letters. Then place them face up on the board below the rondel, removing the remaining major poem cards from the game. Place a random city tile face up in each of the nine cities on the map. Place one seal on the left hand side of each city and return the rest of the city tiles to the box. Then place a random trade card on the board and return the rest of the trade cards to the box. Next, each player chooses a colour and takes a workshop, four starting storehouses, an architectural balance card and all components of the same colour. Each player will then place their initial storehouses in their respective slots, all of their workers stood up in their workshop, the prestige token in the fifth space of the prestige point track, the parrier token on space zero of the parrier track, the favour token on the initial space of the lion fountain, and finally, their nine ships in the kingdom of Granada. Then, each player takes two random starting tiles. They choose one and place it face down next to their workshop, discarding the other. When all players have done this, the chosen tiles are revealed simultaneously. Whoever has chosen a tile with the highest value takes the starting player token. Each player then receives the resources and bonuses indicated on the tile they have chosen. The starting player places their parrier token on the parrier track first. The player to their left places their token second and so on, forming a pile. Take as many dinars as your starting tile indicates according to your position on the parrier track. Once you have done this, you are ready to start playing. Playing the game. A game of Sabika consists of five rounds. The first two rounds correspond to the first error and the last three rounds to the second error. Each round consists of two phases, actions and the end of the round. Phase 1. Actions. In this phase, players will use their active workers. Active workers are those who are standing. On your turn, select an active worker and choose one of two actions. Work. Move your worker from your workshop to anywhere on the rondel, or move your worker clockwise around the rondel if already there. Note that your two master builders can only be placed on the outer rondel and can never be in the same square the merchant in the middle rondel and the poet on the inner rondel. Moving the worker might have a cost. If you place it directly from your workshop or if you move it one or two squares there is no cost, but if you move it three or more squares you have to pay one dinar for each extra step after the second one. If you end the move in a square where the work of another player is present, you must pay one dinar for each worker. Lastly, lay the worker down and perform the main action and or secondary action of the space where the worker is located. Rest. Place a work on the corresponding space in your workshop. Lay them down and earn 3 dinars and lose 1 prestige point. This action is compulsory if you cannot perform any of the rondel's actions. When all workers are inactive, you move on to the end of round phase. Phase 2. End of round. First, each player receives the income from all the blue cities in which they have consolidated their trade relationship. Receive the income from any blue forms that you possess that allow you to do so. Then, advance the narrator token one space to the right. If upon advancing the narrator token there is one of the Sultan's Wishes tiles present, then you must place it on the first empty space in the tower to the left, starting from the top. 
Next, all players will score prestige points for all of the Sultan's wishes in the tower. The Sultan's wishes are only scored in rounds 1, 3 and 5. Next, all players must pay the number of parriers indicated under the space where the narrator tile is located. To pay, you can combine the following options. Move your parrier token back one space for each parrier required. Pay two dinars for each parrier. Discard one seal for each parrier. Or lose one prestige point for each parrier. Next, stand up all of your workers and move all of the Sultan's workers one square around their respective rondels in a clockwise direction. Replenish any gaps that have been generated on the map during the round. The player in the lead on the parrier track chooses the new starting player. When the narrator token reaches this space on the round track, remove all Error 1 major construction tiles from the game. End of the game. At the end of the fifth round, the game ends and the following steps take place. You receive income as explained previously, advance the narrator's token, scoring the Sultan's wishes and paying the required parias, score for any major poems you have carved, and score prestige points depending on the conditions of the trade card on the map. In addition, earn one prestige point for each seal, marble, glyph, ceramic and two dinars that you have. Whoever scores the most points wins the game. If there is a tie, the player with the most major and minor constructions wins. Main Actions Next, we will explain in more detail the main actions that you will find in the outer rondel. Minor and Major Quarries Take three materials of your choice from amongst those indicated on the square of the rondel. Storehouse Choose one of these two options. Expand your storehouse by placing one of the available tires on top of one of your own without covering the store boxes. Then, gain prestige points. One if it is the first time you expand and two if it is the second. You also receive the bonus indicated on the tile you have just placed. Alternatively, activate a storehouse tile that you already have in your workshop instead. Mark it. Earn two dinars and complete two of the following transactions. Buy. Get resources by paying the dinars indicated by the red arrow on the board. Sell. Earn dinars by selling your resources indicated by the vertical black arrow on the board. Trade. Exchange materials for other materials, additionally receiving dinars in some cases as indicated on the board. Construction. First, decide whether to build a major or minor construction. Before deciding, you can pay one dinar to discard the visible minor construction cards and turn over four new ones. If you do this, you receive one prestige point. However, you can only do this once per turn. Major construction. Place one gypsum and up to two extra materials on the scaffold of the corresponding error. These extra materials must be different from each other and will improve the quality of the construction. Then, receive as many prestige points as the board indicates based on the materials used. Next, choose one of the available tiles from the current error, place it next to your workshop and receive the rewards from left to right. First, advance your Sultan's favour token one position and gain the bonus of the square reached or any bonus of your choice from previous squares. Next, gain the construction bonus indicated on the tile. To finish up, Flip it over so that only the building type of the tile is shown. Minor Constructions Choose one of the minor constructions and place the mandatory material indicated on the card onto the minor construction scaffold. And, optionally, up to two different bonus materials to score as explained above. Then, take the card and place it in any free space to the left or right of your architectural balance card or next to any other construction card you had previously placed. If after placing your card, you form a decorative tile of a single colour, you receive a bonus depending on said colour as indicated on your architectural balance card. Next, we will go over the main actions you will find in the middle rondel. Export First, choose a destination city where you have no ships present. Then, pay the cost in dinars for the routes you must travel to reach that city from the Kingdom of Granada or the nearest city where you have presence. Next, Take one of your ships from the Kingdom of Granada and place it on the left side of the city. If there is a seal, take it and place it in your workshop. The seals can be used as a dinar, as a paria or as a prestige point at the end of the game if you manage to hold on to it. Afterwards, deliver up to two of your goods from your storehouses, placing them next to the raw materials goods bag. You earn one prestige point and one paria for each good. You will also receive an additional prestige point and paria if you have met the demands of that city. Finally receive the city bonus. Consolidate. Choose a city where you already have a ship present on the left hand side and move it to the right hand side. If there are already rival ships on the right hand side, they each earn one prestige point and one dinar. If the city is red, you earn a bonus action which you carry out immediately. 
If it is blue, you receive whatever the tile indicates during the income phase. Produce. Receive the bonus of a city where you have a presence and process up to two raw materials from your workshop. Now, we'll move on to the main actions you will find in the inner rondel. Carve a poem. First, choose one of the available major or minor poem cards you would like to carve and place the dinars indicated on the card on the poem carving scaffold. Then, place one mandatory base material as denoted on the scaffold and, if you wish, one additional material which must be different from the materials used. Once done, take the card and place it in your workshop and receive the prestige points corresponding to the quality of the materials used. Blue poems are placed on the left, red poems on the right, and grey poems at the bottom of the workshop. Blue poems grant a permanent bonus for the rest of the game, whereas red poems give an immediate bonus. These two types of poems are placed in such a way that only their colour is visible. Note that there is no limit to the number of poems you can have. You are however limited to two grey poems per game, and these are placed side by side below your workshop. These poems score prestige points at the end of the game. Reactivate a red poem. Reapply the effect of one of your red poems. Artisanal labour. Earn 3 dinars plus 1 dinar for every 2 poem cards you have carved. Secondary actions. Secondary actions are those located between the rondels. The ones located between the outer and middle rondel allow you to obtain a raw material, or, if the square is empty, to process one you already have. The raw material goes to its processing box in your workshop. If you already have that raw material, instead of taking a second raw material from the board, process the one you already have in your workshop. Processing consists of flipping over a raw material tile and placing it on its good side in one of your storehouses. The second reactions located between the middle rundle and inner rundle allow you to obtain one marble or, if the square is empty, either one gypsum or one wood. To perform these actions you must pay the dinars indicated depending on the type of work you perform it with. And so there we have it, how to play Sabica, a game designed by Germán Mian. A Euro game with a lot of depth, full of possibilities in which you will feel like a real Nasrid noble in search of glory. In addition, Sabica also has an advanced mode that introduces game-changing events and a solo mode. So, do you have what it takes to leave your mark on history?